Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and today I'm going to show you how to use our new execution plan viewer in Oracle SQL Developer Web. I've got a detailed blog post with step-by-steps and much more technical drill downs into all of the different features on my blog. You can see the link here on the screen but I'll also will leave it in the video description. So here we have Oracle SQL Developer Web and this is available in two primary places. Uh, if you are using the Oracle Autonomous Database and the Oracle Cloud SQL Developer Web is your primary user interface for running queries, managing users, getting uh, real-time SQL monitoring reports, just in general interacting with your database. So this is not limited to Oracle Cloud subscribers. Any customer of Oracle REST Data Services, or also known as ORDS, any customer using that for an Oracle database in someone else's cloud or in their own data center or even on your own laptop like I'm running right now has access to this technology. So ORDS is free and I have another video that shows how to download, install, and configure it for your Oracle database and get up and running with SQL Developer and I'm also going to leave a, um, a link to that in the video description. But what I have here today is the latest version 22.3. It was released last week and I'm connected to an Oracle 19C database. It's just a regular developer account, and I'm in our SQL worksheet. And from here, we can do things like run queries, create tables, take Excel spreadsheets, and load them as new uh, tables with all of the data. But what I'm here to talk about is to show you how to get the execution plan for your queries. So when you ask Oracle to run your SQL, the database has to take that statement and compute a plan for it. And the plan tells the database, hey, these are the steps or instructions we're gonna follow to get the data that Jeff is asking for. So the beauty of SQL is it's sort of a descriptive language. I'm describing to the database the data that I want. So I'm saying here, hey, I want all of the columns in this object, a DBA data files, which happens to be a view, which is front-ended with this public synonym but I only want the records where the status column is equal to available. And it's up to the database to decide how to go about getting this information. So if we look at this button on the toolbar, it's the first one after the, the buttons with the green collar, this will say, hey, let's go get an explain plan for this query. So when I click this, we'll compute that plan. So if you've used this tool before, or if you've used SQL Developer on the desktop, what you're used to seeing is a plan display that looks more like this. So it's sort of a tree view, uh, but then it also has uh, some columns associated with it. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this, there's some other extra information attached to the plan. And this is the way that we've displayed execution plans, at least in SQL Developer, for a very long time. And the feedback we got in a recent customer survey was, hey, it would be nice if you had a more intuitive way to read execution plans that would be more user-friendly, especially for someone that's newer to the platform or just new to SQL in general. So starting with this latest release, when you ask for that explain plan, uh, this is the new default view. So it's more of a, it's more of a flow diagram and I can see each step and the important pieces of information tied to each step. So Oracle stores execution plans for display in a view or a table called um, plan table. And when we query the rows in plan table, there is one row for each step and there are many, many, many columns for each step. So for example, I could have a plan step called select statement, and then I could have 30, 40, 50, 60, even more pieces of information tied to that step. And seeing all of that information all at once can be a bit overwhelming. So one of the things that we tried to do was, hey, let's put the most important information um, in the diagram, and everything else we can leave off to the side, and the user can ask for the detailed information later if they want. So that's what we're doing here. Um, the first step here is actually the last one that's executed. So um, the totality of the select statement is represented in this box here. Um, this is saying, hey, 100% of the cost, the CPU cost, the amount of work we estimate it's going to take the database to do to execute this plan and all of its steps, that's 100% of the plan right now. And when I mouse over it, we show you the exact um, 
value associated with that um, with that plan cost for CPU. And then if we look at this bar right here, this is showing, okay, for this last step, this is the specific steps cost associated with the plan. So 17% of the work for this plan, for this query is gonna be done in this last step. If we scroll down below, we can see um, this plan step accounts for 17% of the work. And this step and everything below it accounts for 82% versus 100%. Now by default, we don't show you the entire plan. We break it down to just the top three nodes or the top three steps. Let's go ahead and expand this out. Now I could expand these nodes uh, myself manually by clicking the little plus button on each diagram and just, and just explore level by level. But instead what I'm gonna do is say, hey, let's explode everything all at once because this is probably a little bit closer to what you're used to seeing um, when you're looking at execution plans. They're sometimes quite unwieldy and they're hard to navigate. So that's one of the problems we've tried to solve here is one, let's, let's um, keep it to the top level up front and let people dive deeper as they want. And then if they do blow everything out all at once, let's give them a nice navigator. So up here in the right hand corner, I have this box and I can use it to kind of tool my way around the plan. So if I'm really familiar with this plan, I, I might be able to actually just go directly where I want to see. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We also have the ability to zoom in and out. So we do have the zoom level quite high by default. I wanted, wanted it to be easier for people to see. But I could also say, hey, let's just um, show everything to screen here. So the more complex the plans are, the or the bigger your monitors are, the more uh, user-friendly that will be. Actual size will take me back to the original Zoom. Now, in terms of like, hey, where do I start? Where we generally start you um, is at the top of the plan or the last step that's executed. But over here to the right, we've looked for plan steps in the plan that have a higher percentage of CPU costs. So in general, you're looking at these plans for one reason. Your query is taking longer than you think it should, and you want it to run faster. So what you're looking for in these plans are bottlenecks. So like what plan steps are taking the most time to run or which ones are the most expensive. And the other thing we're looking for in these plans are where the information that the optimizer is seeing is incorrect, and that's causing the optimizer to make the wrong decision. Um, and that's a much more complicated topic, and I would recommend you go take a look at SQL Maria's YouTube series on reading execution plans. It's, it's quite brilliant. And I would also like to thank Maria Colgan, or one of our other product managers here at Oracle, for helping us design and validate what we were doing with these execution plans. So if you really like this, it's, it's partly uh, due to Maria, and if you absolutely hate this, then I take the blame. It's all my fault. All right, so over here to the right, I can see I have two plan steps that are accounting for 17%, which would be these two here. We can see these on the screen. And then down here below, we have some other ones. So nested loops, 8%. And if I click on that, it'll recenter the plan to that step. And then let's take a look at what's being shown here on the screen. So again, the actual cost here of this step is 8%. This node and its children are accounting for 27% of the plan cost. This is the 22nd execution step in the plan. We have the IO cost, the overall cost. We have a column here for in out. That's reserved for parallel degree queries, and I'll take a look at that later. We have the number of bytes um, accessed by this operation. And then above this, we have the cardinality. So this is the number of rows that this step is expecting to encounter. Did we hit all of the metrics? I think we hit all of the metrics. So uh, since we are looking at this uh, in terms of sequential steps, and we're giving you that number here, if I use the tab key, it'll actually take me to, I think in this case, plan step 23. And if I keep tabbing, we can just go through the plan step by step. Now if I do shift tab, we'll go the opposite direction. So we could shift tab all the way to number one, or I could use the um, navigator bar here to, to poke around and look for plan step one, which, which is this guy.
There's a couple more controls on the screen I want to look at really quickly. If we're down here, and I want to go quickly to the top of the plan, I can click this button here and it'll immediately center me back to the last step. Um, if I want to limit what I'm seeing in the plan based on um, CPU cost, I could say, hey, don't show me anything if it doesn't take at least 5% CPU cost. So this is another layer of filtering. So now it's a good bit simpler to read. And I'm only seeing plan steps that have at least a 5% CPU cost on the plan. And I'm just going to zero this back out. So now we're seeing everything again. Let's see, the last thing I want to touch on is more information. Let's say you want more details on these plan steps. So let's say that I want more on this hash join. If I double click on the node, we will pop out the um, plan table information, um, you know, so that plan table view in the database that stores these execution plans. Each step has a row. Here's the information that is stored for this hash join. So I can see much more information here than what is shown on the dialog. There's also a other XML column in the plan table where the optimizer stores additional pieces of information. And we're showing that here as a JSON document because it's just a little bit more compact, easier to read um, than an XML document. And this is where the optimizer just puts more interesting information, like if there are hints that can be applied or if a plan is an adaptive plan, um, it'll put that information here. So those are known as notes. And if you want to just read the notes, that's what this button does. It just shows me what the plan notes are. Okay, let's pull up another query real quick. So I have a saved query. Don't want to save this. I have a saved query, uh, parallel query. So let's get a plan for this. So let's go ahead and explode this out to see the full thing. So this one's kind of narrow, but it's tall. So it's a series of simple steps. And then the tree doesn't really branch too far out. But we can see now that this in out column has information. So as we get into the parallel degree steps, you know, some of these steps are very specific to the parallel execution, like this PX coordinator does exactly what it sounds like. It's coordinating the work that these parallel slaves are doing. Um, and then down below, you can see the parallel work is kind of broken out into different levels. So we have parallel to serial, parallel combined with parent. And if you're curious what these actually mean, um, they're all listed in the Oracle um, Understanding Execution Plan docs. And I will also have a link to that in the video description. Some of these metrics are a little bit more interesting. We can see the number of rows being applied per step is much higher because I'm going against the sales history table, which has over a million records in it. This is also the estimated work, the estimated metrics, the estimated statistics. And these will be as accurate as the statistics you have asked the database to collect on these tables. So if your statistics are stale, the optimizer is not getting a true picture of what's happening in the database, and it might be picking plans that aren't ideal. And so that's one of Maria's first tips. She'll tell you, they say, let's make sure our stats are accurate. If we come here and look at the plan notes, there's a little bit more interesting level of plan notes here. It's like, hey, uh, the reason we got a, 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 a parallel execution plan here, that means degree of parallel, is because it's been asked for via hint. And the degree of parallelization is four. And then we have some in-memory pieces of information. And these are all found in the um, these are all found in the other XML column, um, or the other XML nodes attached to the plan. Over here on the toolbar, um, these buttons are pretty self-explanatory. I can switch over to the old school view, which we started with. We can print the plan. We can save it as an FG SVG. I can zoom in and out. I can fit it to the screen. Um, this one's, uh, well, actually, this one's more interesting. If we have a really big plan and they're hard to read, we can go full screen display. 
So as you have bigger monitors, you know, as your visual acuity is differing than mine, you can find the view here that's more appealing to you. And last but not least, um, this feature is documented. You can pull up the um, in-application help by just clicking the little question mark box. And we scroll down here to section 3.2.3.1. And by the way, this is documented online in the Oracle Docs, and I'll also include a link to that. Thank you for making it to the end of this video, and thank you for, you know, waiting for six months for me to make a, a new one. I've been very busy here at Oracle. Uh, we've built lots of great new technology here this year in 2022, and I hope to be making some more videos going forward in the future. And if you have requests for things you'd like to see or topics you'd like me to um, hit, I like this video, subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment on what you'd like to see. Thanks so much, everyone. Happy SQL diving.